the last lecture uh, we have uh, discussed the steps uh, to find maxima and minima how uh, we are able to find the maxima or minima for the given function okay so let us uh, try to revise again okay. i hope uh, all of you are able to uh, see this clamboard uh, yes sir okay So when we have a function f of x y, what we do first, we first uh, try to find the first order partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y. And once we get uh, the derivative of uh, this function f of x y with respect to x and with respect to y, we equate them to zero. Okay, so we consider uh, f x is equal to zero and f y is equal to zero, and then uh, we try to find out what are the all possible pairs which will satisfy this equation okay simultaneously fx equal to 0 and fy equal to 0 and then after collecting the pairs of x and y we satisfy these two equations fx is equal to 0 and fy equal to 0 these pairs are nothing but the stationary values so stationary value means where the function changes its behavior Okay, and once we uh, get this stationary values, then we consider the second order derivative. So we have R, which is fxx, we have S, which is fxy, and we have T, okay, which is fyy. Okay, so these are the second order derivatives we consider. Then we calculate the value of uh, these derivatives at the given stationary value. After calculating, what we consider, we consider RT minus S square. Okay. Now, if RT minus S square, okay, this term is less than zero. So if it is less than zero, then what we conclude? F has neither maxima. or minima. Okay, if it is equal to zero, test fails, and we uh, need to find out the fourth order derivative and then test it. Okay, now what we have next, so if it is greater than zero, then F has either maxima, or minimum. Okay, that's what we can have. Okay, so after getting uh, this, then uh, we consider uh, whether if the maximum minima exists, then we calculate the maximum value of uh, this function f at the given point. And uh, if it doesn't exist, then we uh, call this point as a saddle point. Okay, so this is what uh, we are done. Okay. So is there any doubt uh, in this procedure or in these steps? No, sir. Not F -X -X. Not, uh, okay. So there is no doubt uh, up to it. Okay. So now uh, we'll try uh, for the example. Okay. So here uh, we, we have just uh, revised what we have done in the previous lecture and what are the steps. Okay. So let us uh, try to understand this with the help of example. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, what is fxx? fxx is uh, the first order derivative of f with respect to x. That is dy by, by dy by x. fxx is the second order derivative with respect to x. Yes, sir. What is it? Sir. Thank you. Okay. That's good.
Okay. So let us try an example. Are you able to see this example? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. So we have example. Find all stationary values of this function. So we have to find out the stationary values as well as we have to uh, test where which of this is going to be maxima or which of this is going to be minima. Okay. So we go with the solution. Okay. What we have let f is equal to so it is x cube plus 3x y square minus 15 x square minus 15 y square plus 72 x. Okay, so this is the function. Okay, we can say b the function of x and Y. Okay. Now, first step. What we have to do is we have to find out the first order derivatives of this f with respect to x and y. Okay. So we consider gamma f by gamma x. This is f x. Okay. So differentiate this function with respect to x partially. Okay. And now what we have here? This will be three x square. Then we have plus b y square minus we have thirty x and plus seventy two. Is that okay? Are we getting this derivative? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. And we have double of by double y that is f y is equal. To. Okay. So we have to differentiate this function with respect to y. So the derivative of this term is going to be zero. So here we have this is six x y. Okay. Now here this term, the derivative of this term is going to be zero minus you will be having thirty y, and the derivative of this is going to be zero. So here we have completed the first step. Now what we have to do next? We have to solve double by double x is equal to zero, and double by double y is equal to zero. So we have. Double of by double x is equal to zero, and double of by double y is equal to zero. Okay, so we have to consider these two derivatives equal to zero and solve this. So here, what we get here, three x square plus three y square. Okay, minus thirty x plus seventy two. This is equal to zero. And what you'll be having here? Six x y minus thirty y is equal to this. Okay, so these are the two simultaneous equations that we have to solve. Okay, so here what we can do is we can have six y common. This is x minus five is equal to zero. Okay, so here we have uh, three factors: six y and x minus five. So is it possible to have six is equal to zero? No. 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 Okay. So six cannot be zero. That means either y has to be zero or x minus five has to be zero. So here y into x minus five is equal to zero. So we can write y is equal to zero or x minus five is equal to zero. That is what you'll be having. Y is equal to zero, okay, or x is equal to one. So there are two possibilities that y is equal to zero or x is equal to five. And if y is equal to zero, what are the corresponding values of x? And if x is equal to zero, what are the corresponding values of 
y that we have to calculate okay so first we consider if y is equal to 0 d how okay so from this equation we have got y is equal to 0 so put this value in this equation so if i put uh, y is equal to 0 here okay what we are able to get uh, this equation so this equation becomes x square dx square minus uh, 30x plus 72 is equal to 0 are you getting this so what i am using yes, here i am using y is equal to 0 this value this value we have taken from this equation so that's why i am using it in the another equation okay now if i consider y is equal to 0 this term will be 0 so these are the terms which we can have so here we'll be having x square okay now what this will be this will be 10x what this will be this will be 24 is equal to 0 is that okay yes are you getting this so what yes, will sir. be the factors x minus 4 and x minus 6 is equal to 0 is that okay yes sir. yes are you getting these factors so we'll be having x is equal to 4 or uh, x is equal to 6 so when y is equal to 0 either x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 6 okay so here we got two stationary values okay so we have see uh, x is going to be 4 and y is going to be 0 and x is going to be 6 and y is equal to 0 be the stationary values Okay, so considering y is equal to 0, we got these two stationary values. Now consider x is equal to 5. Okay, so if x is equal to 5. Okay, so suppose x is equal to 5, then what we will have? So we have, now see this equation. What is the equation we have? 3x square plus 3y uh, square minus 30x plus 72. Okay, here x is going to be 5. Okay, so what we can have? We can have 3 into 5 square. Then uh, here we have plus 3y square plus 3y square minus 30 into 5 plus 72 is equal to 0. Is that okay? Here yes, we are putting x is equal to 5 now. Okay, we have used already y is equal to 0. So now we are putting x is equal to 5. Now we will simplify this and we will try to get the value of y. Okay, so here I'll be having 3 into 25 plus 3 into y square minus uh, this will be 150. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Plus 72 is equal to 0. So what you'll be having here? 3 y square. Okay minus uh, 150 plus what do you got here this will be 75 plus 72 is that okay yes so 3 y square minus 3 is equal to 0 so what do you got y square minus 1 is equal to 0 so what will be having y minus 1 y minus uh, y plus 1 no sir yes sir yes Okay, so y square minus 1 is there, no? So we can have yes, sir. y minus 1 and y minus uh, y plus 1. So we can write y is equal to minus 1 or 1. Okay, so we got y is equal to minus 1 or 1. So we can say here, when x is equal to 5, y is equal to minus 1. When x is equal to 5, y is equal to 1. So what we can have is, hence, we have another uh, stationary points. So 5 comma 1 and 5 comma minus 1 being the stationary points. Okay, so we collect all these stationary points. So here we got four stationary points. Hence, we have what this is going to be 4, 0, 6, 0. When y was 0, we calculated x. And now when x was 5, we calculated y. Okay, so 5 minus 1 are the stationary points.
stationary points or stationary values. Now, here we have completed our second step. Okay, that we calculated the first order derivative and that we solved the equation first order derivative equal to zero. So we completed the second step. Now we have to test. So for the test, we need the second order derivative. And hence, we consider what is the value of R, S, and T. Okay. So let us try to calculate R, S, and T. What will be having next? Consider R is equal to f square f by double x square. So this is nothing but f x x. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to differentiate this first order derivative with respect to x again. So if I differentiate this uh, derivative with respect to x again, so here I'll be having 6x, the derivative of this is going to be zero and this is going to be minus 30. Okay, so 6x minus 30 is going to be the derivative here. Okay, so this is going to be 6x minus 30. Okay, now we calculate yes. So yes is double square f by double x double y. Okay, so we find the derivative of double f uh, by double y with respect to x. Okay, so we have calculated the derivative with respect to y. So this is the derivative with respect to y. Now differentiate this with respect to x. So this the derivative of this term is going to be zero. So derivative of this term is going to be six y. Okay, we are differentiating with respect to x. Okay, so the derivative of this term is going to be 6y. And what we want the next? We want t. So what is t? Double square f by double y square. So this is fyy. Okay. So we are differentiating with respect to y and uh, we have to differentiate the derivative of uh, this f with respect to y and again uh, this with respect to y. So the derivative is going to be 6x minus 30. So are you getting this derivative? This is again yes. 6x minus 30. Okay, so we got R, we got S, and we got T. Okay, so if you know R, S, and T, then we are able to find or we are able to decide whether the given stationary value is a maxima or is a minima. So what we can have is add we'll consider these points one by one. So what happens at this point four comma zero? Okay, so what will be the value of R? See, uh, here we have X is equal to four and Y is equal to zero. Okay, so calculate uh, this value of R. What is R? Six X minus 30. So it is going to be six into four minus 30. What will be the value? Minus six. Minus six, correct. Then what is the value of yes here? Zero. Zero, because y is equal to zero, so six y equal to zero. And what we know is t. So what is the value again? Six x minus 30. So it's going to be minus six. Is that okay? Yes. Are you getting these values? Yes. Okay, so we have RT minus S square. So it is minus six, minus six, minus zero square. So is it 36? Yes, sir. It is positive, negative, or zero? Positive. 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 Yes, it is going to be positive. So what we can say is RT minus S square is equal to 36 greater than zero. Hence, the function of as either maxima of as either maxima or okay. So this term that RT minus S square is greater than zero guarantees that there is a maxima or minimum. Okay, now we have to decide whether it is a maxima or whether it is a minimum. Okay, so we can say since R is equal to minus six less than zero. Okay, R is equal to minus six, which is less than zero. So if it is less than zero, 
what is the conclusion? R is less than zero. What is the conclusion? Function is maximum at given point, not minimum. So the function function as is maximum at the given point. As maximum at four comma zero. Okay. And now, if we have decided that uh, it has a maximum at this point, so we need to calculate what is the maximum value. So we can say the maximum value of f at 4 comma 0 is given as so what we want to calculate what is f max okay so f max how you are going to calculate f max see the function definition and put the value x is equal to here in this uh, function definition, we have to put the value x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 0. Okay, so let us try to calculate this. Okay, so what we can have here, see this value. So it is 4 comma 0. So what we get here, 4 cube. Okay, plus we got 3 into 4, y is going to be 0, minus 3 into 4 packet square. So you can see here. Okay. So it is going to be uh, 3xy square, then minus 15 and uh, minus 15 plus 72. So here it is going to be a square. So here, what do you got now? This is minus 15 x square minus 15, y square and plus 72 x. Is that again? Okay? What is the function x cube plus 3 x y square minus 15 y square minus 15 x square and plus 72 x. This is the function, right? Are you getting this? So in this function, we are putting x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 0. So please calculate the value and give me the value what you get here. 112. 112. Very good. So your max is equal to 112. Okay. So this is the one point that we have tested. Okay. So we have tested this 4, 0. Now try to test at 6, 0. So next point will go 6, 0. Okay. So what will happen at uh, 6, 0? At 6, 0. We have what is R? R is 6 into 6 minus 30. So it is going to be 6. E is R S. What is yes here? Yes is, you can see, zero again. Okay, because it is going to be 6y. Okay, so here it is again zero. And we have t. So t is again 6 into 6 minus 30. So it is going to be 6. So we got, now, we have rt minus s square. So we got here 6, 6, minus zero square. So again, it is going to be 36. Is it less than zero or greater than zero? Greater than zero. Greater than zero. So what is the conclusion? It will have either maximum or minimum. Does it exist? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we can say here, since RT minus S square is equal to 36 greater than 0, hence F has either maximum or minimum. Okay, so it has either maximum or minimum. Okay, so if it has maximum or minimum, what we have to do is we have to test what happens to r? So r is equal to 6 greater than 0. So if it is greater than 0, then what we get? 
Minima. Minima. Okay. So, hence, of us, minima at 6, 6 and minimum value of f is f mean is a so brigade here 6 cube plus 3 6 into 0 square <coughs> minus 15 6 square minus 15 0 square plus what do you get 72 into 6. Okay. I hope uh, you have calculated the minimum value. So here job mean is equal to 100 and 108. Yes. So we got here. 108 or 108. So you can see the minimum is less than maximum. Okay, the minimum is less than maximum. And this condition should be always followed or always satisfied for maxima and minima. Now we got maximum and minima. What happens to the remaining two points? Okay, so add what will be having 5, 1. Okay, we have. Yes. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So at 5 1, we have R is equal to. So this uh, X is going to be 5 and uh, Y is going to be 1. Okay. R, what is R? It is going to be 6x minus 30. Okay, so here we have R, 6x minus 30. So what we have here, S yes, is going to be here. This yes is going to be 5. See what we get here? 6x minus 30. Okay, so it is going to be 0. E is equal to same 0. Zero. Zero. Okay, what about S? Yes? Six. Six. So it is going to be six. Okay, so we got R is equal to zero, T is equal to zero, and S is equal to six. What we can do is consider RT minus S square. So what we got here? Zero, zero. Minus. What you got here? So, is it minus 36? Are you getting this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, it is less than 0. What it means by uh, less than 0? The function has neither maximum nor minimum. Neither maximum nor minimum. Correct. So, what you can say is, hence RT minus S square is equal to minus 36 which is less than zero ends of has neither maximum neither maximum Oh. Okay, so when we have a point whether uh, where we don't have the maxima or we don't have the minima, what this point is called? Saddle point. Yeah, it is going to be a saddle point. Okay. So it's minus 36 less than zero. And hence, what we can say is this point 5, 1 is a Saddle point. It's going to be a saddle. Now, think of the next point. So, at five comma minus one, what we are able to get? So, we have R is equal to. So, 
third is going to be zero, p is equal to zero, and s is equal. To. So what uh, yes we'll have. Is that okay? Are you getting this? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So hence we'll be having RT minus S square. So it is zero into zero minus of minus six bracket square. So is it minus thirty six? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So again, this is less than zero. Okay. So what happens if it is less than zero? So RT minus S square. Okay. What this term is going to be is minus thirty six less than zero. Okay, and if it is uh, less than zero, so what we can say is hence point. Or here we can say hence your fast neither. Maxima nor minimum. Okay, and the point five comma minus one is a which type of point is this? Saddle point. Saddle point. Yes. It is going to be saddle. Okay, so you got this. Is there any doubt in this example? No, sir. All of you got this. Is there any doubt yes, in this example? No, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. I have doubt. Yes, please. Sir, uh, in notes you have written that uh, if the R T minus S square is greater than zero, then the function is said to be having maxima or minima. And yes. you said to check whether R or T is less than zero or greater than zero. Mm -hmm. Then, if any situation in any condition arises when R or T having different sign, then what we have to check whether R or T. Okay, very good question. Okay, let us try that this R and T has the different sign. Okay, let us yes, see. Yes, yes. Okay. So I hope uh, we are done with this question. Okay, let us see this here. Okay, suppose. R is less than zero, okay, and T is greater than zero. This is one situation, right? Okay. Yes. Sir. What will happen to R T? Negative. Yes. Very good. Negative. Okay. What is the expression that we want to test is R T minus S square. Correct. Yes. This term is always negative because it is minus. Is that okay? Yes, sir. This term is again less than zero. Okay. Yes. So what will happen here? Isn't that true that R T minus S square is less than zero? Yes, sir. Yes. Because we have seen that R T minus R T is less than zero, so we are subtracting something from this negative quantity. So obviously, it will be a negative quantity. Yes. What this situation says when R T minus S square is less than zero, then what is the situation? Neither maxima nor minima. Yes. So F has neither maxima nor minima. Okay. Now let us turn the situation either way. So now I consider R is greater than zero and T is less than zero. Is that okay? Yes. What will happen to R T V? Again negative. Again negative. Right. So what will happen? Again it will go to the same situation. 
Yes, sir. Same thing will happen. Okay, same thing will happen, na? So again, R T yes. minus S square will be uh, less than zero. So again, you will have neither maximum nor minimum. Yes, sir. Okay. So R T, R and T will always have the same sign. Okay. R will okay, be sir. positive at that time. T will be positive. R will be negative at that time. T will also be negative. And that's why I have uh, given you in the comment. You have to check R or T. Okay. So any one of these two you can choose. Got okay, it? sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Welcome. Okay. So is there any other doubt? Is there any other doubt? No doubt. No. Okay. no Very good. So, if you have any doubt, please uh, feel free to ask. Okay. Now, uh, we'll go to the another example. Okay. So, let us try to have uh, another example. Okay, so let's have this example. So I hope uh, you are able to see this. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So here, uh, this is the given function. Okay, so we go with the solution. Let f is equal to x, y, t minus x minus y, and be the function of x and y. Okay. Now see, what is the first step? Find out the first order partial derivative. So what we do next? Consider. Here, double f by double x. So we have to use even to a rule. Okay, either we use even to a rule or we can multiply inside and then uh, take it uh, at one time only. Okay, so that is also possible. So here I write y is going to be constant. So x into this term. So 3 minus x minus y plus I'll be having the derivative of this term. So it is going to be x, y, and this is going to be minus one. Is that okay? okay? Yes. Hello, sir. Sir, in previous term, uh, yes. we uh, have to only do till stationary points. Now they have not asked to find maximum minimum, right? Yeah. Okay. So the question will be asked always like this: uh, find the stationary values. So we have to find the nature of the stationary values also. So that means we have to find whether this at this point the function has maximum or minima. That means whether that point is a point of maximum or minima or not. That also we have to find. Okay, sir. Okay, so the question can be asked in three ways. Okay, one straightforward that find the maximum minima of the function. Okay, the next way find the stationary values. And the third way, find the extreme values of the function. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. So here uh, we have uh, this. So you got this first order derivative. Are we getting this first order derivative? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what I can have is I can have y common. Okay. So from here, I can have y. Here, I can have y. What I'll be having? 3 
minus x minus y and this is minus x is that okay yes yes sir so we got dava f by dava x is equal to y into p minus 2x minus y okay and we have dava f by dava y now x is being constant so we have to think of y and this bracket so what you'll be having here uh, this will be p minus x minus y okay plus you will be having here x y as it is and this is going to be minus 1 is that okay are you getting this term yes sir. Yes. yes sir okay so we can have x common here and we can write p minus x minus y minus y symmetry okay? so we got here yes, dava f by dava x uh, dava y here dava f by dava y is equal to so we got x and this is 3 minus x minus 2 okay so here i can write this as p y minus 2 xy minus y square or here i can write this as 3 x minus x square minus 2 x y okay so these are the first order derivatives now uh, we have to solve okay so we have to solve these two equations dava y by dava x is equal to 0 and dava y by dava y is equal to 0 okay so let us try this okay so we got the first order derivatives now we have dava y by dava x is equal to 0 and dava y by dava y is equal to Okay, so we consider dava y by dava x is equal to zero, and we consider dava y by dava y is equal to zero. So here we have y into three minus two x minus y is equal to zero, and x into three minus x minus two y is equal So these are the two equations that we have to consider. Okay. So here, if we consider these two equations, so we have to consider the points. Again, okay. what we'll have here. So either this y is equal to zero, again, okay. or this bracket is equal to zero. And either this x is equal to zero, or this bracket is equal to. Zero. Okay, so let us consider. If we consider this term, okay, so either this will be zero or this will be zero. Okay, so what we can have is either y is equal to zero or. P minus two x minus y is equal to zero, and here x is equal to zero, or three minus x minus two y is equal to zero. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So now see, if we consider y is equal to zero, okay. So suppose y is going to be zero. If y is equal to zero, okay. So this uh, y is equal to zero. What you will get? Okay. Put this value of y is equal to zero in this equation, right? Because when we consider this value, we have to use it in the other equation. Okay. So if y is equal to zero. What will you get? We have x and this is 
3 minus x is equal to 0. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Because we are using this y is equal to 0 here. So, we get x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 3. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what are the stationary points here we'll be having? So, 0, 0 and 3, 0 are the stationary values. Is that okay? Are you getting yes, this? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now let us think x is equal to 0 and put this value here. Okay. So if x is equal to 0, then we have y into 3 minus y is equal to 0. Is that okay? If I put x is equal to 0 yes, in this sir. equation, yeah. okay. So you get y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 3 or y is equal to 3, right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So here, what we'll be having? Again, 0, 0 and 0, 3 are the stationary values. So once we consider that uh, y is equal to 0 once we consider that x is equal to 0. But what happens if these two uh, brackets are going to be 0? That is also possible, no? Yes, sir. We have seen that this may be 0 or this may be 0. So what happens if uh, these two terms are going to be 0? Okay. And hence, if p minus 2x minus y is equal to 0 and p minus x minus 2y is equal to 0. So, we have, what will be having here? See, this I can write as 2x okay. you can write this as 2x plus y is equal to 3 and we get x plus 2y is equal to 3. So we can solve these equations immediately. Okay, so we can write here solving of equations. We get so what you will get x is equal to 1, 1 comma 1. Equal to, yes, oh, well. yes. Easy. So we got 1 comma 1 and hence the stationary points are what are the stationary points? First is 0, 0. Second is 1 comma 1. The next is 3 comma 0. And the another is 0 comma 0. Okay. So here we have collected all the stationary values. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. And now, what we have to do is we have to consider the second order derivatives. Okay. So, consider R is equal to. We have R is equal to we have double square f by double x square. So this is equal to. What is double square f by double x square? So we have the function here. This is the function we want to find this uh, derivative of this function with respect to x. So, what will be the derivative with respect to x? Is it minus 2y? Yes, sir, minus 2y. It will be minus 2y. Correct. We are finding the derivative with respect to x. Okay. So, this is going to be minus 2y. So it is minus 2y. Then you will be having s is equal to. So it is double square f by double x double y. So the derivative of uh, fy with respect to 
x. So derivative of this term with respect to x. So what is the derivative of this term with respect to x? So it will be three minus two x minus two y. Is that okay? Yes, sir. So three minus two x minus two y. So we get here three minus two x minus two y. And what you will be having t? So t is double square of y double y square. That's what we have. Now we have to differentiate this term again with respect to y. Okay, so let us differentiate this with respect to y. What will minus be the derivative? Two minus, minus two x. Correct. So we got here. This is going to be minus two x. And these are the points. So let us try uh, these points. What happens at the point zero zero? So we get what you have. R is equal to zero. S is equal to three, and t is equal to zero. So what will happen to R T minus S square? Shall I write it directly? Okay. Yes, sir. Is it minus three? Yes, sir. Square. So it is going to be minus nine, right? Yes. Okay. Better we write it like this. Okay. We write it like this. So. Is it greater than zero or less than zero? Less than. Less than zero. So what we can conclude? Function saddle has maximum point. minima. Yes, this is the saddle point. So f has, but you have to write this first. Okay, f has neither maxima or that is point zero zero. Is a saddle point. It's going to be a saddle point. Now uh, we have to think of next. So, what will happen at what is the next point? One Zero comma one. one. Okay. So we have and this is one comma. So we have r is equal to what is r minus two y. So it is going to be minus two. A is again minus two. Yes is equal to what will be the yes? Is it minus one? Minus one. Minus one. Okay. So we got this is going to be minus one. Okay. Now see we got these values r s and t. So what we have to consider r t minus s square. So it is minus two minus two, and this will be minus of minus one square. So it is going to be four minus one is going to be three. So is it uh, greater than or less than zero? Greater than zero. Yes. So what we can say about f? It will have either maximum or minimum. Correct. So it will have f as either. Maxima or minimum. Okay, and hence what you are having r is equal to minus two. So greater than zero or less than zero? Negative. Less than zero. Less than, less than zero. zero. So what we can have? F has maxima. Okay, maxima at the given point one one, and hence. The maximum value of f is so what we got here f max is equal to so it is x into y t minus x minus y. Is that okay? So what is the value you get here? One. One. Correct. So you got f max is equal to. Okay, so once you know the maximum value of f is going to be one, okay, so you will not have uh, the value more than one. Okay, so now next, what we have to do is add the next point, t comma zero. Okay, so we considered 
zero zero we considered uh, one one now we have to consider three zero. So what happens at uh, three comma zero? Okay. So what will happen at uh, three comma zero? Three k. So r is equal to it is minus two y. Is it zero? Yes, sir. Yes. E is minus two x, so it is minus, minus six. six. And what is yes? That is yes is e minus two x minus two y. Is that correct? Minus three. Minus so three. Be minus three. And hence, what will be having? R t minus s square. So it is zero into minus six minus time minus three square. So is it minus nine? Yes. yes. So R T minus S square is equal to minus nine. Is it greater than zero or less than zero? Less. Less than zero. So what will happen to the function? So it will either has maxima or. Okay, and then what we can say, the point. Okay, so we are here. This is e comma zero is a saddest one. What this one? So what will happen at uh, zero comma three? So At zero three, okay. So what you're having now? This R R is going to be minus six. E is going to be zero, and S yes is equal to minus three. So what will happen? R T minus S square. This is minus six into zero minus of. Minus three square, so again it is minus nine. Okay, and then what we get here? R T minus S square is equal to minus nine, which is less than zero. So we got here F has neither maxima or minima. Okay, so it has. Neither maxima nor minima, and hence we can say the point here we have zero three is a saddle point. So you got this idea? Is there any doubt? Sir, okay. Yeah. Is there any doubt in this example? No, sir. No, sir. Sir, can we say that if we not got minima at any stationary point, then this function will always decrease after one? Uh, no, we cannot. If then uh, we could have got the minima. Okay, mm -hmm. so there is a concept called uh, local maxima, local minima, and global maxima, global minima. Okay, so what we are testing here. Is a local maxima and local minima. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sir, such questions are lengthy. So, will they be asked for higher marks? Yes, definitely. They can be asked. See, purposely I have chosen the lengthy example so you can have, you can think of the maximum points. Okay, so there may be the example with one or two points only also. Okay, sir. Yes. So I have purposely chosen so that you can have the maximum combinations. Okay. Are you done with this example? Yes. Yes. Sir. Is there any other doubt? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So. That's good.